Hello, dear friends. May God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit, the Comforter who consoles us, the Spirit of life, the Spirit who gives us faith, the Spirit who teaches us, who exhorts us, the Spirit who convicts us of the truth, the Spirit who guides those who are interested, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit whom Jesus sent in order to conduct us, to lead us into all truth. May the Holy Spirit do this that we mentioned here now in you and through you in the life of your loved ones, your family members and friends. Pay attention. Today is the day of peace. All over the world, we are working in the churches, in the universal church, talking about peace, praying, crying out, asking and demanding from God the peace which He promises. Jesus said like this, My peace I give to you. My peace. Imagine the Lord Jesus, God Himself, giving His peace to us. But then the question comes, Okay, I'm a person who believes in Jesus. I'm a person who always goes to church. I don't live in sin. I live a very simple life, a correct life even. Why don't I have peace? Why am I so afflicted? Why have I been feeling so anxious? Why am I so temperamental? difficult even to deal with. You may ask this question, why am I like this? Come on, inside of me there is no peace that I hear so much about, the peace that Jesus already gave. Why don't I have it? Well, dear friends, let me tell you the truth, the truth that sets you free, because perhaps you won't like the truth, but it's the truth that sets us free. It's what sets us free. Jesus said like this, in His prayer to the Father, He said like this, I do not pray, I do not pray for the world. I don't pray for the world. And because Jesus didn't pray for the world, the world is in darkness. The world has been at war. The world has been serving the devil himself. It's the prince of the world. Jesus called the devil the prince of the world, of the kingdom of this world. He's not talking about here the sea, the beauty of nature. No, he's talking about society or the societies of this world. In every society that the world concentrates in, then we are going to see that this is the world that Jesus is talking about. He said, I do not pray for the world. There in the Old Testament, God says the following words, There is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. And here he is referring to the world, because the world is wicked. You can verify, for example, that Jesus said, let me read for you, so it's even more interesting and easier to understand. Jesus said, Woe to the world because of the offenses. He censors the world because of its offenses. And he said like this, 
the cares of this world, look at how he speaks of the world, the cares of this world, meaning people who are focused on the things of the world, fashion, news, people who are diving into the things that the world has to offer. You know, the shopping centers of this world. This is the world that Jesus is saying that it's been condemned, meaning that the world has no peace. This world has no peace. If you are within this world, you won't have peace. There's no way. You may have money, you may be successful, you may you know, reach the highest level of popularity and being an influencer, and you can be the most powerful person in this world, politically or financially speaking, or even scientifically speaking. But if you are inserted in the world, you are lost. You are lost. You have no peace. Because peace, the one that God gives, is for those who hear and obey His word, His voice. Those who hear and follow His direction. This is it. So, whoever follows the direction of the Lord Jesus leaves the world. They abandon the world. And they live, they start living their life based according to the word of God. Whoever does not want to let go of the world will continue without peace. So, that's how it is. You have to choose because pay attention if you remain in the world you are going to continue without peace empty depressed insomniac you are going to be anxious you are that kind of person that has everything but you are never satisfied you are never happy with what you have never ever ever why because you are in the world, the world that God has already condemned. The world who springs is the devil. The one who reigns in the world is the devil. So Jesus didn't pray for the kingdom of this world. He didn't pray for it. He didn't pray for the world. Obviously, if you are in the world and you like the world, you love the world, then you are not included in this prayer of protection that the Lord Jesus made. You are not included in this prayer. And that's why there is no peace within you. So the religions, philosophies, knowledge, theology, none of these will make you be at peace. Why? Because you insist in remaining in the world that is of the devil. Or rather, in a world where the devil reigns. And if you are in the world, then he reigns over your life. That's the reality. In order for you to have peace, you need to leave the world. And this happens when a person accepts and submits their life, they subject their life to the kingdom of God, to the rules of His kingdom. Then they leave the world. But they don't just leave the world. They actually die for the world through the water baptism. Now you can understand why Jesus said, go into the whole world preaching the gospel, the good news of salvation to every creature. Whoever believes every creature, to preach to every creature that is in the world, whoever believes or those who believe 
and are baptized, meaning they die for the world, they will be buried for this world, then they will be saved. But whoever does not believe is already condemned. Is already condemned. Is already condemned. Why? Because they didn't accept the gospel. They didn't accept the Lord Jesus. They didn't submit their life to the rules of the kingdom of God. But perhaps you say, but I don't want it. I want to be free, Bishop. I want to be free. I want to do my will. I don't want to be submissive to the world, neither to Jesus. There is no way, dear friends. If you are not submissive to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus, you are going to be submissive to the kingdom of this world. If you are submissive to the kingdom of the world, you are not going to be submissive to the kingdom of God. You have to know this. Those who are submissive to the kingdom of this world are not submissive to the kingdom of God. And those who are submissive to the kingdom of God are not submissive to the kingdom of the world. And whoever lives in the kingdom of the world has no peace. And those who live in the kingdom of God have peace. They have peace. So it's not a matter of religion or church or doctrine. Oh, I am from church A, B, or C. It doesn't matter. What matters is the following. Where are you? Who rules over your life, over your soul, over your heart? What has been ruling over your soul? Is it the world? Fashion? Clubbing? The attractions of the world? The cares of the world? Or the cares of God's kingdom? Only you can answer that. If you opt for the kingdom of God, then automatically you receive peace from the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's more. There's more. You want my prayer. You say, Bishop, pray for me. Many people come here and ask, Bishop, pray, pray for me, pray for so and so and so on and so forth. All right. But when you are inserted in the kingdom of God, look at that. Jesus said, Look how nice. For I have given them, I have given to them the words which you have given me. Jesus praying to the Father that in John chapter 17, the prayer of Jesus, the complete prayer, it's not the Lord's prayer. Here he doesn't teach how to pray. In John chapter 17, he's actually praying. And every word of his prayer is a message, is a thought, it's, it's gold. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. Jesus is talking about his disciples. He's praying for the disciples. And they, my disciples, those who follow me, they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you. And they have believed, they have believed that you sent me. They believed, they believed in me, that you sent me. I pray for them. I ask on their behalf, I supplicate for them, those whom you have given me. I do not pray for the world. I don't pray for the world. I pray for those whom you gave me. Then he repeats, I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Meaning, it's the Father that gives to Jesus, who sends to Jesus those who will be saved through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes 
convinces the person of what is written, of his word, convinces them of their sins, the person accepts Jesus, oh Jesus, help me, save me, and so on. They are saved, they are baptized in water, so they've left the kingdom of this world and enter God's kingdom. They are living in God's kingdom, and from then on, they have peace. Because the kingdom of God is the kingdom of peace. The kingdom of this world is the kingdom of confusion and conflict, of tribulation, of war, of hell. And that's the truth. Either you are in one kingdom, the kingdom of God, or you are in the kingdom of the world. If you are in the kingdom of the world, in order to go to God's kingdom, you have to submit to the rules of God's kingdom through the Lord Jesus. You obey His word, you follow His word, then you are baptized in water, die for the world, you start a new life in the kingdom of God. And then peace comes, then perfect peace comes. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All this is summarized with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, they leave the, the kingdom of the world and enter God's kingdom, and they have peace, perfect peace. But as long as the person doesn't leave the kingdom of this world, they will have no peace. What do you want, dear friends? Do you want peace? Perhaps you are one of those people who say, I would give everything to have a moment of peace. God doesn't want to give you a moment of peace. He wants to give you His peace. He wants you to have perfect peace, the plenitude, the totality of His peace in you. That's what He wants for you. However, He cannot impose on you a peace and you continue to live in the world. He won't do that. He will give peace to those who submit to His rules here on earth. If you don't accept it, then there is no deal. It's either yes or no. There was another time that Jesus said like this. He spoke a parable and at the end of it, he said like this, and the cares of this world, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in choke the wood and it becomes unfruitful which is what is happening a lot nowadays. A person says, oh, I'm a Christian and all, but I also want, I also want to go see the world. You know, I'm free. Jesus called me into freedom. So let me go see what the world has to offer. So they are in the kingdom of God, but they want to try a bit of the kingdom of the devil. And it doesn't work this way. So these are people who are undecided. They are neither brick nor clay. Their life is like this. They call themselves Christians. They confess their faith. They carry the Bible in their hands like a brick under their arm. They know the word of God. Oh, your grace is enough. Your grace is sufficient. Okay. But what kind of grace is this that has no taste? It's so tasteless that you have no peace at all. You have no peace. Apparently, you may even show that you have peace. But within you, within you, there are inferiority complexes, sadness, emptiness, an anguish, grudges, resentments, malice. It's as though your life is just the leftover of the world inside of you. The leftover of the world is inside of you because you are in the world. As long as you are in the world, you are going to continue suffering. 
if by any chance you die, you go to eternity whilst being in the world, then there is no way anymore. There is no salvation anymore. Nothing else that can be done. You only have the opportunity to be saved as long as you are in the world and you resist it. You turn your back on it. You turn your back to the whims, the desires of the world, the things of the world, the fleshly things of the world. That's it. You turn your back on it, then yes, you enter the kingdom of God. Then your life is then based within a discipline, an order, firmly, and that's how things go. You have a peaceful life. The peace from heaven makes you think, reason well, and live as you've been wishing to live for so long. That's it, dear friend. That's it. Jesus said like this, He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. This is it. You have to hate your life in this world. I have to hate my life in this world. And I hate it. I hate it. That's why sometimes people say, Bishop, come on. So many people want to hear the word of God for you to preach and this and that. Yes, I know, but I want to leave this world already. I would like to just leave this world as soon as possible because I hate this world. It stinks. It stinks badly because it doesn't have anything to offer that pleases us. So why should I continue living in this horrible world? Physically, I have to live here, but spiritually speaking, I'm not here anymore. Dear friends, this is it. The peace that you want depends on your decision. It doesn't depend on God, only on yourself. Only you can decide to, to have this peace, to decide to have and receive this peace when you make your choice. God has given you the right to choose your destiny, your future. He's given us free will and He doesn't touch this. This is something personal. So each one has to decide for themselves. Do you want it? Then let go of the world so that the kingdom of God can come and embrace you. Okay? May God bless you. I hope I have been able to help you. I hope I have been able to remove doubts. I want it to be very clear. Even if you don't like this kind of message, but I want you to understand it so that you can come to the conclusion then. I want this or I want that. This is it. May God bless you all, especially today. And I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.